Hi there, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and today we're going to have some fun with our epoxy resin as well as some foil. To get started, I'm incorporating my foils with an epoxy finish. So the first thing that we're going to do is put on a layer of foil adhesive. And if you haven't seen our foil adhesive before, it's just milky white to start with when it's in the container and it dries perfectly clear. So we are going to go ahead and roll on one full coat. And I am using a low nap roller that's about a quarter inch nap. Uh, we're working on MDF. The MDF has been painted already uh, with a base coat that's like a dark chocolate. I always like using dark paints underneath my foils. And because we're doing an epoxy pour, this board has also, has um, the edges have been routered, okay? So I'm gonna come through here and make sure that I'm getting my foil adhesive everywhere. And then we're gonna need to let the foil adhesive dry for no less than an hour, okay? I know we try to push this and let it dry shorter periods of times for different projects, but to get a good firm dry tack, you really wanna let that sit for an hour. And then also come back and roll in one direction with a nice light touch and you'll create the least amount of texture you can with using the roller. And that way, hopefully, we're not going to see any roller marks. Okay, we're going to let this dry, and then we will come back and apply our foil. So our foil adhesive is completely dry, and I have my sample board directly on some plastic. Because remember, I put foil adhesive around all the edges, so it's kind of sticky. So don't put it on paper. Put it on some plastic. And I have chosen this beautiful foil that is called uh, tie-dye, and it is our blue-green tie-dye. And our sheets just barely fit, not completely across. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth this down with a soft cloth, okay, just to get it onto our surface. And uh, I'm staying away from this edge because this distinctive straight cut, if you um, push that into your surface, it will transfer. So you wanna make sure that you are rubbing short of that edge and I'll show you guys how to um, how to just bring that edge in together, okay? So we're going to use our scrub brush. I'm scrubbing in one direction only, so I'm going back and forth. So I'm keeping a linear application here. Uh, and you don't wanna go in all kinds of different directions because it can affect the transfer of the foil. I'm also going to go ahead and lift up, and while I've got the foil wrapped on that edge, I'm going to go ahead and scrub that edge as well and try to get that transfer. And then let's unwrap this, and let's see how our transfer is, okay? Uh, looks like we're getting pretty good transfer here, okay? So if we don't have as much transfer as we want anywhere, we can always lay our foil back down because it's gonna fall right back into place. And your second time through, you can start to do a circular motion and work um, the foil off of the, the carrier a little bit better, which that definitely gave me a better transfer. So we're gonna lay it back down. We're gonna get our circular motion out. And then I'm going to peek from this side as well. Uh, finish getting my transfer here. Okay, that looks really awesome. So what I'm going to do is turn this around so that you can see better. Because now we have to piece together a section here. So I've cut a piece of foil that I know would cover that length, okay? I'm going to overlap the transition line and always start off with your soft cloth first. 
And I like to always kind of get an idea because I can see where it's grabbing the texture. So I know where my transition line is. And you don't want to scrub too much over the area that has already been transferred. So I get a little bit lighter where I'm getting on that part, okay? And then I can really work that open section well, okay? And you'll definitely get more of a transfer. Okay, so here we go. We've got our sample ready to go. And now we're gonna do a fun epoxy pour on this. And now we're gonna get this back up on our triangles because when we do our epoxy pour, the epoxy is going to drip off the edges. Um, that is one of the reasons why we wanna make sure we have plastic underneath so it can drip off and onto the plastic and be safe. Okay, it's time to glove up. Um, we are gonna be working with our liquid glass epoxy. Um, let me grab that for you to see. Um, we have this in eight, 16, and 32 ounce kits and it's wonderful to work with, and it's nice that we've got smaller sizes for anybody's project. And I already have this in large containers, okay guys? <laughs> because we're doing so much around here, we just have it in bulk. Um, you always wanna start off with your hardener first, and I label them B and A, because they are labeled that way with most companies. That you wanna put your B in first. Okay, I know it seems backwards, but this is the only way I can remember. Um, it takes three ounces total to cover approximately a 12 inch square. Our board's a little over that, so I'm gonna do a four ounce pour. That means I'm gonna do two ounces of each. So your hardener is more liquid, and that's why you wanna pour this one first. Um, because it's going to pour easier and get down into the container. Okay, and I'm trying to be as, ex as exact as I can because equal parts of your product is very important. Okay, so I got two ounces of part B and now you can see how thick part A is. And so again, I want to be really careful. You sometimes have to pour pretty slow so that you can make sure that you are at that four ounce line and that you're being as exact as you can. The one reason for trying to be as precise as possible is if you don't have your mixture correct, you might not harden as well as you should, okay? So you could end up with soft spots if you don't make sure you measure well. So I have definitely purchased these cups that have all the measuring uh, lines on them. And then you are going to take the time to make sure you scrape your sides, you scrape the bottom, and you stir this for no less than two minutes. Now I know you guys don't wanna watch me stir this for two minutes, so we're gonna stir this up, make sure we have it completely mixed, and we will be back and two minutes. Okay, we have stirred this well for two minutes. And at this point, um, we're gonna go ahead and pour it onto our surface, okay? So I'm gonna pour it all out. And the nice thing is when you're working over foils, you don't have to do anything on top of the foil. You can just pour your product right out on top of it and work from here. Now, because it's a little cooler back here today, so my epoxy seems really thick, I'm just gonna grab my blowtorch and just heat it up for a second. Okay, that is gonna allow me to be able to move this across the surface way easier. Okay, also, when I'm using foils, I always want to spread out the material with my hand and not a tool because I would definitely scratch that foil underneath. So uh, make sure that you just use your hands. Your hands make a perfectly great trowel for this. So we're gonna spread this out and this is just completely clear. I haven't added anything to it and we are going to create a beautiful finish with this with just using some spray paint and alcohol. So spread it out there well. Uh, also, when you are 
Let's get back up on there. When you are working, okay, let me double check. I think we have two of our triangles that fell over there. Okay, that's not working well. <laughs> um, when you're working with your epoxies, um, if you are in a cold environment, you want to put your epoxy into a room, warm room, and make sure it gets above 60 to 65 degrees because otherwise it's going to be really cold and hard to work with. Um, so at least make sure that you've put it in a room warm and roomed it up to, warmed it up to a nice uh, warmer room temperature before you try to use it. So once I have spread it out across the top, all I'm going to do is just take my hand and make sure I'm moving the epoxy down on the sides so that 100% of this is going to be covered, okay? You don't want to leave your sides alone. Okay, now, because my hand is covered in epoxy, I'm just going to use a paper towel to wipe it off, and I'm going to use a paper towel to kind of protect my blowtorch, and I'm just going to go across the surface and just try to bring all the bubbles to the surface, okay? Okay, that cleared out the epoxy beautifully. So our next step, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and change gloves here, okay? It's not a, not a bad idea to have several sets around as you're moving from product to product because your hands are going to be really sticky. Okay, I'm grabbing just um, Rust-Oleum paint. This is a paint and primer. It's called Ultra Cover 2 2X, okay? And this is what is recommended to use. Make sure you give it a really good shake. Okay. Once you have the can shaken up really well, I'm gonna do what I call a high fog, okay? So I am just going to go over the surface, not trying to opaque it too much, okay, but just get it to where it looks basically black, okay? And now we're gonna come in with some alcohol, okay? Now this is 91% alcohol. Um, and because we have our blue, green, and a little bit of gold, okay, um, you wanna test your your spray bottle. So this is just 91% alcohol in a spray bottle. And always test it first because you want to see what the spray pattern is and you want to make sure you have it spraying the way you want before you hit your project, okay? Uh, there we go. Okay, so don't just go over the top and think it's going to be the right uh, spray pattern. And then you're just going to lightly hit it Okay, and don't overhead it too much. I know it's really, really cool, but wait for some of the reaction to um, occur and see if you want to put any of the alcohol anywhere else. Okay, so I also have um, alcohol in here as well as the 91%, and I put in some gold mica powder. Okay, I'm going to shake this up good. I'm also going to test this first and make sure that I've got a good little spray pattern going. And we're going to hit some of the areas that I missed with just the plain alcohol and bring in some of the gold as well. What's cool about this is it reacts to the um, black spray paint and it opens it up so it's exposing all the beautiful foil underneath which creates an absolutely incredible finish. Uh, I don't really know what you would call this but um, it's pretty cool. So let it sit. If you get too much alcohol on your surface, you can make things start to want to run over, okay? So kind of embrace some of the areas maybe that stay solid and just give it a couple of minutes to kind of just do its thing and work. Um, I'm kind of feeling like I want to spray over here, but um, I think I'll let that sit for a few minutes and just determine if I really need any more activity on here. So I can always go back even to the clear. and add a little bit, okay? And then basically just have to let the epoxy do its thing. Now, how incredibly simple is that? We didn't do much more than apply a foil finish, spray some paint on our epoxy, 
and let the alcohol do all the beautiful coloration, okay? Because it's exposing and it's continuing to move and gonna continue to just develop. So we have to let this just sit. Um, it's going to run over the edge, okay? So what you can do is kind of babysit your edges if you want and just kind of clear them off with your hands or you just don't worry about it and when your project is completely dry, then you can just sand those off. So we're gonna let this sit and see exactly what we have. Okay, we're gonna come in, try to get a little closer for you so that you can see some of this incredible activity that that alcohol did with the black spray paint. Okay, we have a little glare from our overhead lighting, so we apologize for that, but isn't that gorgeous? Okay, I think we're just gonna let it sit and rest. If we have any little divots or any imperfections, we can always come back and just pour another clear coat over the top, which will level everything out. If we hit it with heat again, heat's gonna make everything continue to move and you're gonna lose some of your pattern. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Thank you.